drinking too much beer, smoking too many cigars, and during the period that we'll discuss this week, he actually came close to death in the opinion of his doctors, and they ordered him to back off. Of course he didn't. But uh, brilliant man, and, and, and many people died a villain. Uh, not necessarily a nice guy. Gorchakov was his rival. We'll learn more about him today in the anecdotes. Gorchakov was the Russian prime minister. He was also, at this point, an old man. Some people thought he was senile at this point. He was classically educated also. I didn't mention this last week, but his classmate, one of his classmates as a young man, he came from a, a noble family, was Pushkin, the, the Russian poet. <coughs> Uh, who, after Zukovsky, became the most prolific Russian writer. So Vasily Zukovsky kind of drifts into the no man's land. Uh, Pushkin really replaced him, and later I'll show a picture that Pushkin drew of Gorchakov. They were longtime friends. Gorchakov was a very intelligent man, a writer, a thinker. He didn't usually dress like this. He dressed like this. Most of the time, he dressed very, well, what we would call bohemian. He was a bohemian kind of a character. Uh, his name was Alexander Mikhailovich Gorchakov. And he came from an illustrious Russian family. He was born in 1898, so by this point he was 73, which is encouraging for all of us. Uh, he died... 1798, I'm sorry, 1798. Yeah, see, a typo in my own book. He was born in 1798. Every time I look at this, I find more mistakes, but they're always that tight. But in any case, he, he, when, when he was uh, the prime minister, somebody accused, told him, probably the czar, that he should dress more formally. And he said, and here's his quote, uh, this is from his, his, one of the writings about him, he said, I don't need to dress. I am clever. I do not need sartorial arraignment. I have read Horace in the original. So, <laughs> that's his, uh, his characteristic of himself. But that was his opinion. He also was a skirt chaser, like many powerful men, and it became well known by this stage in his life that that was part of the, what he did when he traveled to all these events with the emperors. Interesting character. But, you know, I, I, you know a bohemian prime minister who doesn't like to dress up, but uh, was happy that he could read Horace in the original. Duke de Caz is a, a really an honorable man. Many people would think of him as dull, because he was an honorable man. There's not much that he did that was ever scandalous, really nothing. During this period, he went back and forth between being prime minister of France and president, not president, foreign minister of France. So he goes back and forth. He stayed in power the whole time. Very sharp, very intelligent, very thoughtful uh, in a thinking way. He did not jump at anything. And if you read the diplomatic correspondence when he was in either position, he's always advising the diplomats to be cautious. Because remember, France was rebuilding, and you did not want to provoke Germany into attacking again. By the same token, you needed to make yourself, my first slide mentioned the words, Bundesfähig, capable of an alliance. Um, as an aside, you know, I, I joke about it. every time I look at this, you know, the French you know, you know, and the Germans, sort of like I always say, Pennsylvania and Ohio, they're side by side, and yet they're so different in culture. Uh, you know, the French are the famous line of, um, from the song that's been popular for about 30 years in different versions, you know, uh, which is improper French, voulez-vous coucher avec moi, would you like to go to bed with me? You wouldn't really say it that way, and it should be voulez-vous coucher. But in any case, who did that song? I can't remember her name, but it's been done twice, over and over again. The French, if they were trying to meet somebody, would say something like that, not quite that. They used to instead of voulez-vous to. But in Germany, Bundeswehr means you know, I can picture a German saying, Bist du Bundesweg? Doesn't sound quite as dramatic as Next door neighbors, totally different language. The language reveals the culture. Are you capable of alliance? Do you want to hook up? The French wanted to hook up. They wanted to be alliance capable and they were going after Russia. I mentioned Boyce just briefly because he was a classic example of this time period. He's way back. Oh, what's your point? Boyce was, the, he started this period as the Austrian foreign minister, when there was just Austria. He was born in Dusseldorf, which is now Germany. But, but 
in that point, there, there are before 1866, when the Germans defeated the Austro-Hungarians, there was no Germany. There were German people, the folk. You heard the Germans talking about folk. It's another German term. It doesn't mean the people. It, does, it means more than that. These German words mean more than folks.